すべてを止めたいと思いながら仕事をし写真を撮っていますそういう意味では私の作品は今を生きるための復讐劇のようなものかもしれません To fear death calls for drastic reactions for death to man is the greatest tragedy man will encounter once realizing the inevitable two paths diverge ahead of him He spends his life either desperately avoiding it or grasping for any experiences while he can. It is up to him to choose a path, and it makes all the difference. The story of Masi s e f u k a s e counters this very method of thinking. f u k a s e was terrified of death, of the end, of rotting away into nothing infinitely. By falling to fear, f u k a s e began coping in the only way he accepted photography. It was rumored that he would attempt to photograph every individual moment of his day to day life, for a memory cannot escape if it is sealed within physical means. As a child, his interest in art sparked from his family's blooming photography shop, and with this interest growing, f u k a s e would move to Tokyo to indulge in his passions as an adult. This move would be the stepping stone towards his vastly successful career, but deep down, his heart remained in Hokkaido. Over the next several decades, f u k a s e would return to Hokkaido often to take photographs of families, a metaphor in itself, and a hint towards his fear coming to fruition. In his mind, perhaps his hometown of Baifuku resembled family, resembled safety, resembled the beginning. Rather than an end. f u k a s e s first claim to fame began shortly after his education in Tokyo. In 1960, he hosted his first exhibition show titled Sky Above an Oil Refinery, and in 1961, he would release two controversial yet critically acclaimed artworks at his next exhibition Kill the Pig and Naked. Kill the Pig. Consisted of him photographing the horrific surroundings that partook at slaughterhouses. Images were captured in black and white, but f u k a s e would save his colored film for the gore. At first glance, the photos are purely shock value, but there's something more in the photos, something more than just unaware victims. f u k a s e captures an eerie glimpse into the reality of death. There is no afterlife that materializes in front of us. It is Just a corpse. Whatever once guided this body is instantly gone from this world. You will never witness it, what guides the flesh and mind. And to further complement this idea of something guiding the flesh and mind, Naked was created. The photos taken for Naked are exactly what you expect photos of both Fukase and his at the time wife, nude, and in various poses. It could be seen as being surreal or experimental. But there is the chance that f u k a s e wanted to present you with both cravings of the flesh. Death of the flesh satiates hunger. Embrace of the flesh satiates lust. Kill the pig and naked may bring out disgust, anger, and perhaps sadness within a person. But it begs to ask are these very experiences not catered just for you? But suddenly, the contrast between the two collections is vividly interrupted when, in the naked exhibition, he includes a photo of his stillborn infant. To Fukase, however, life goes on. It must be captured. It feels as if he wanted to express the beginning layer of his fear to the outside world that there are two contrasts of life love and death. And how they can be separated with ease before then forcefully conjoining them in the end. While these art series welcomed him into a life of success and fame, it is possible that the passing of their child began f u k a s e s spiral into obsession. His first wife, Yukio Kawakami, would leave him only a year after the release of Naked. The trauma of losing their child, and now f u k a s e s photographic obsession, would become overbearing. Two years after the divorce, f u k a s e would marry once again, this time to Yoko Wannabe. The love that f u k a s e had for Yoko c 
could be felt in many of his following projects and art books, but it wouldn't be long until Yoko begins to be disturbed by his crippling cope with reality. Fukase would begin working on the art piece from window in which he would capture Yoko's daily existence. What would once be charming smiles and poses, malnourished into fatigued, loveless, empty faces. As the viewer, you witness Yoko's love and compassion for Fakase fade away into nothingness. She continues to pose nonetheless, rather out of habit or out of pity for her husband's mental state. According to Yoko, his obsession was about control, controlling time, controlling memories, controlling scenarios, and his lust for control spread into the relationship. Yoko would describe their time together as suffocating dullness, interspersed by violent and near suicidal flashes of excitement. With Yoko's happiness fading and Fukase's obsession growing, both at staggering rates, Yoko would finally leave Fukase in 1976. To fill the void that had formed in his life, Fukase would adopt a kitten that he would name Sasuke, anything to generate a spring back into his life. After taking pictures of the kitten, only a week would pass when he would discover that his kitten had run away. He would post dozens, if not hundreds, of missing posters, but Sasuke would never return home. Fukase would fall into a deep, several-year-long depression. He felt that life was dispatching closure to all ends of his happiness. Thus, Fukase would turn to alcohol. Life had now become gray. The fear of letting go fought with the newfound fear of continuing on. The lust to experience it all, meanwhile, fearing the end to it all. Heartbroken, lost, depressed, and often inebriated, Fukase would find an object that he could resonate with in his newer photos. The Raven. It is believed that ravens have strong meaning in Japanese culture, omens of a troublesome future, disruptive to your routine, symbols of darkness and even death. But when the world is gray, the end is inevitable, and nothing seems to matter anymore, Fukase found to befriend this very creature, this very omen. Fukase found peace. For years, he would capture photos of ravens and their surrounding environments. To the world, ravens represented darkness and misfortune. To Fukase, ravens represented a fleeting love and heartbreak, a melancholic grasp at life. Though temporary, these memories around us are still beautiful, still powerful. That life, despite having an expiration, is worth experiencing. Some say his photos of ravens were a look into his mind but this discussion becomes binary. One observation being that everything is grim and pointless. The other being that everything can be beautiful. Not that everything is beautiful, but everything can be. Years later, Fukase would finish taking pictures of ravens, stating that he himself had quote unquote, become a raven. Whether he means he had succumbed to his darkest thoughts or that he simply became too obsessed with them, is up to the individual's perception. Nonetheless, these very photos would be released in an art book titled Ravens. The photos represented meditation on love, loss, and bereavement, and has been hailed by critics, with some even saying that it is the best photo book of all time. Ravens would single-handedly become Fukase's magnum opus. The errors of his insecurities and struggles in life would come to illustrate Fukase as one of the greatest photographers, if not artists, of the 20th century. Magazines all across Japan would publish pieces from the art book in their collections. City exhibitions would be held solely for the book, and it would subjectively become the greatest art he would ever create. Only a year later would Fukase's father pass away, an event that would traumatize and separate his remaining family. His mother would enter a retirement home as a remaining family could no longer look after her. His brother and stepsister would divorce, and his biological sister would suddenly move out of the hometown with her husband. 
Although being held in such high regard, Fukase would once again experience the grasp of his fear. He would be remarried by this point, but Yoko still remained the catalyst of his life. The end is all around him. His first child, both of his marriages, the love of his life, his kitten, his father, his brother's relationship, his mother's health. It was all coming to an end, despite his hasteful attempts to secure present memories. During these last few years, Fukase had been traveling to his home frequently to capture photos of his family, a project that would come to its own end with the passing of his father. He would release these photos and photos of his father in their respective collections before finally relapsing to his alcoholism. Fukase would hold several more exhibitions, with his last one being Private Scenes, 1992. Several months later, Fukase would visit his favorite bar, proceed to drown out his thoughts, and would then leave. As he declined the steps from the bar, he would trip and fall down the stairs, giving him severe trauma to the head and serious brain damage. Fukase wanted life to simply pause. He would spend his days photographing reality, grasping at its very nature, pleading to not let a single second go. Slaughtered animals, naked lovers, stillborn infants, smiling families, loving faces that faded to empty glances, the fleeting raven. Life was to be at Fukase's fingertips at all times. Yet, after his fall, he would spend 20 years of his life in a hospital the impact to his brain reducing him to a comatose state. Masahisa Fukase would never wake up again. June 9th, 2012, Fukase would be 78 years old when he finally passed. 50 years escaping the end, destroying relationships, his health, and his own mind. His fear of death would ultimately accelerate him towards that very reality. All of his sacrifices, however, would result in him changing the way that life can be perceived. Though dark and fearful in life, Masahisa Fukase would bring light and power into the world.